Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the conversation series. I am incredibly excited to have the amazing Allie Clausen here with me today. Um, she is working with the 76ers right now and being on their social media team. So excited to have her here and let her introduce herself and then we'll get into this. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. I'm like, I love podcasts, so I'm very excited to be here. Um, but yeah, so I'm Allie. I am 23 years old. I just graduated this past May from Temple University, which is in Philadelphia. Um, I was an advertising major, which comes to a shock for some people. Um, yeah, I currently work for the 76ers on their social media team. Like you said, I have interned in the past with the Phillies and Flyers, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I think that's really the good intro. I don't know. Hi. Nice. Love it. Um, and dabbling in a lot of uh, a lot of the different pro sports teams and you've got to see the baseball, hockey and now the basketball side of it, which is phenomenal. Why is it, Why is everybody so shocked that you did advertising at Temple? So I feel like a common like misconception about working in sports is that you have to major in sports or like sports right. management, something like that. Um, which obviously is not true. Most people I know who yeah. work with me or I've worked with in the past were not um, sports management majors in any way, um, including myself, obviously. I didn't even know I wanted to work in sports until literally the end of my junior year. Okay. So I was kind of late to that, um, which did worry me at first, but I kind of, my senior year was like dedicated to almost catching up, if you will, yeah. um, and trying to get all that good internship experience and whatnot so yeah that's a common misconception that I like to like smash down nice so nice <laughs> I like it I like smashing down misconceptions whatever area it may be um I love to start at the beginning um and just where did sports begin for you you said in junior year you finally realized that that's where you wanted to be but were you a sports fan growing up? Did you play sports? Did you grow up in a sports family? Where, where did that begin? Oh, yeah. So big Philly sports family. Nice. Um, all my outfits as a baby were always Phillies, Flyers, Eagles, <laughs> all the Philly teams. Yeah. I have so many pictures like that. Um, so just growing up around that really introduced me. And then I do have a younger brother. Um, and he did, you know, how a lot of younger brothers do. He did all the sports sports growing up football yeah. basketball baseball soccer so I just grew up going to all of his games and I like unlike most of the sisters who would like kind of run away and like go play on the playground yeah. or something like I was always the one sitting there watching the games like yeah. I wanted to go to his practices I loved watching um because also like I didn't play like a traditional sport if you will I was like a competitive cheerleader my whole life okay um so I didn't really get to play any of those sports firsthand but I did also love them so and just with the schedule of how cheerleading is it's a full year oh, yeah. sport so there's no off season so I was never able to play softball growing up I always loved softball wanted to play it volleyball as well yeah um, never really got to everyone always thought I was a basketball player because I am tall I'm about like five nine so nice. I get upset all the time but no never played basketball a day in my life <laughs> I did win a three-point competition in seventh grade though so wow. that that's a pretty good flex I have <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah just from growing up around my brother's sports and my dad coaching him like I said big Philly sports fan family um, then in high school, I stopped doing competitive cheerleading um, just because it's crazy. It's a lot. Um, people don't really realize. I feel like they kind of like, you know, that's a whole different conversation, but yeah. yes. um, you don't really realize it's a lot. So okay. um, I decided to just stick with school cheerleading and my school also competed. So it was kind okay. of like the best of both worlds where I got to now watch the sports um, that I loved, like football, yeah. basketball. We also did wrestling um, and then I also got to compete. So I did that all throughout high school and I was always the cheerleader turned around watching the football game instead yeah. of doing the cheers I was supposed to be doing. So got in trouble a little bit for that. And then <laughs> my was it freshman year or sophomore year, one of those years I randomly decided to join track because I, okay. I just wanted to try something different. I wanted to try 
um, a sport that I never did before. Yeah. Um, I wasn't the greatest. I'm not going to sit here and say I was. I did try. I did it for two years. I did um, the jumping events because the okay. coach actually wanted me to since I was taller, had long yeah. legs. Oh, yeah. Um, I did do okay. Wasn't great. Like I said, the training was a lot. It was a lot yeah. different than any kind of training I did for cheerleading right. where it was all about endurance versus Absolutely. like actually having to like yeah. train for speed and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, but it was fun. And then I went into college, I retired as an athlete. Um, and then I just was watching sports it's going to, I lived in Philly. I still do. So obviously I went to some games, kind of fell in love with that. Um, cause growing up from a small middle of nowhere town, like I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't have that opportunity. I didn't even go to, uh, I think any professional sports teams until wow. late high school, maybe wow. not college. My yeah. first hockey game was literally when I was working same with NBA. Wow. Um, so yeah. And I went to one Phillies game, I think when I was like very young, but okay. Other than that, I grew up going to like their minor league team, which I also worked for uh, the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, um, yep. the Phillies minor league team. So I grew up there and uh, it really helped me get into where I am today. So nice. Yeah. Very cool. I feel like if you grew up in Philly, it's a given that you are just a massive sports fan yeah. just because of the sheer greatness of sports that you guys have up there. Oh, yeah. um, and I have never met more passionate fans for sports than Philly fans. You never will. They're the best. They're a little crazy. Yes. Sometimes. Like, especially this year, this year has been like the best experience yeah. and the coolest. Yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cheering for the Eagles. I'm cheering for you guys this, this NFL season. Um, I think you guys have got a, a phenomenal team and it's just fun to watch. So, uh, so fun to watch. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> it's come a long way. It's been a few really hard years. Yes. Even the Super Bowl year was a little hard. I did not, no one saw that coming. So this is like the first time in my entire life where I've ever sat down and watched an Eagles game and like fully had faith and like was just able to enjoy it. <laughs> I would love, I would love to have that feeling. I'm a Carolina Hurricanes fan, born and raised watching Carolina Hurricanes and after the Stanley Cup, I did the 10 years of just, this is awful hockey to yeah. watch. Yeah. And last five years have been phenomenal to watch, but there's been like stretches this season where it's like, I don't know if I can watch this right now because yeah. it hurts a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the Flyers, we don't even need to. They're just, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about them, but still love hockey though now big hockey girl but they yeah. are not they're not doing it. no no it, it happens it happens it does. we I, we started out rough this year too and i'm like oh this is it's gonna be that kind of year it's they, they tricked us this year though they started off the first like i think it was four four games they were undefeated which yeah. no one i mean it's only four games but like for the flyers that was a shock yeah. And then now we're just back into like the losing yeah. streaks and yeah. back to what we expected. So it happens. It happens. It definitely does. We've all been there. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Working with a variety of different roles and with the Phillies and Flyers and 76ers, what do you carry from those three very different pro teams, three very different opportunities that you've had with them? Yeah, I had three different jobs at every single one. And then um, starting off in sports, I was just like a game day intern at the Iron Pigs, Yep. Um, which kind of was like just an introduction role for me. I wanted to see if this is like where I thought I could end up because I always knew I wanted to work in media of some sorts. I just didn't really know where I fit in into that realm. Um, my sophomore year of college, I ended up having an internship in social media. Uh, okay. which is also when COVID hit and I was absolutely miserable. I hated it. I was like, great. Like, I have no idea what I want to do now. So right. that's lovely. Um, so then, like I said, junior year, I got an email um, from my college at Temple and it was about a sports media certificate. Okay. And I was already in my second semester, my junior year. So I was like, well, that sucks for me because I don't have time to graduate with it. 
Um, but I was like, I don't even know what sports media really is. So right. from there, I kind of started looking into it. And that's when I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to do that. Yep. And I just like knew it. So I had that first internship where I was just kind of introduced to every different department in sports. And there was so much more than I ever could have imagined and Absolutely. how much of a business. And it really is even from like promotions. And yeah. I was doing all of that. So it was really good intro role. And then I actually had someone from the Phillies reach out to me on LinkedIn, who was my then boss. And he was like, Hey, like I saw you work for the iron pigs. Like you go to temple. Do you want to have like a ticket sales internship this semester? And I was like, sure. And I knew I didn't want to work in sales. I just knew that wasn't where I wanted to end up, but also I was like, I need experience. I was like, I'm not going to turn down an opportunity to work for the Phillies. So um, I did that. And also, again, like I said, I didn't want to work in sales, but I love the internship. It was a really, really good experience to learn, um, especially in social, which I'll get into in a little bit. It's really yeah. good to know all the different departments. Yep. So then after that internship ended, I applied for the Flyers internship I had, which was corporate partnerships. Yep. Um, and it was closer to my major. So it was very close to advertising. So I felt like it would be good to kind of connect the two into yep. sports and see if maybe that was something I'd be interested in um, and go from there. So then I got that internship and I definitely felt more comfortable in the role than I did in sales. Um, I still knew it kind of wasn't really what I was looking for, but it was really good experience, especially now working in social. Yep. Um, I don't, I think a lot of people don't realize how tied in you are with the partnerships team just because everything is about selling content now since yep. most of the stuff is online um there's really no like limit for what we can do yep so we work very closely with the partnerships team now and during my interview with my current boss that was one thing they really liked is that I knew partnerships so well because I can you know kind of go back and forth on both sides now yeah um so yeah it was really good experience even though it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do um, so that's another thing I always recommend when people ask me, it's like, even if it's not exactly what you want, especially while you're in college, like take that internship. Yep. You never know what it can teach you for your next job. Right. And it, it helped you get your job that you have today. And it also like you had no, to, to hit it back to the beginning, you had no idea what you wanted to do in sports with so many different categories. You truly were able to say, cross it off the list and say, nope, ticket, ticket rep is not what I want to do at all. Let's try something. What's the next thing? What's the next thing we can go do? So what a, a excellent point to make there, like take the internship because you don't know what path it could lead you down because it uh, could also connect you with somebody else. Yeah, exactly. Good work for. And I mean, like I said, I didn't even apply for the Phillies job. He reached out to me on LinkedIn. I was just a game day intern. Um, I literally did everything at the Iron Pigs, which really introduced me to working in sports in general. I literally was a mascot at some point. Like yeah. you truly just never know yep. what you're going to get thrown into. So yeah, having any kind of internships, prioritizing using LinkedIn, like yep. I really stress that because I didn't even apply for that. And it was great experience. It's one of the biggest tools I always recommend to people. When I was a freshman in college, showing my age a little bit here back in 2015, when I was a freshman, I, that's the first thing one of my business professors had us do in class was create a LinkedIn profile. And I've had it ever since and have been building upon that LinkedIn profile to, it is such an incredible tool to have because it's easier to start it back when you don't have as much experience yeah. to have to be creating it when you're farther along in your career to have to remember every single thing you've done. Absolutely it's just a little easier to create it yeah I had that same type of situation a professor I think it was an assignment and back as a freshman I literally was like what do I even put on here I was doing all those like LinkedIn courses I was like <laughs> trying everything it's so good too it's so worth it even if you don't have anything right then you can go get yourself acquainted you can go get make your connections with everybody like it is so worth it to create it oh. when you're first beginning Absolutely. And I was a waitress, um, even throughout college at like yeah. a home job when I would go home. And that was great when I was talking about for the ticket sales position is customer service, which is all I did was, 
you know, customer service. So um, don't, I also say like, don't be afraid to use those type of jobs to your advantage as well, especially freshmen and sophomores. Like when you don't have that experience yet, yep. those are also great skills and transferable yep. customer services in everything basically. Yeah. So, oh God. Yeah. I was, was the same. I was the same way. I was a swim instructor and got to the point where I was more on the deck of the pool, but I was working with parents and I was making sure that little Timmy's mom, who thought he was going to be an Olympic swimmer, was happy uh, with her four-year-old and the lessons he was in. And it totally helped because that it's customer support. It's the customer service. How can you work in difficult situations and really make sure there comes a resolution? Um, so I had the same type of experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Those customer service jobs really prepare you. Yes, absolutely. especially for social media. They just get you ready. Oh, yes. They yeah. get you ready to deal with people and yeah. comments and people are bold behind an anonymous screen. Oh, so absolutely. absolutely. They are not afraid of anything. But little uh, do they know that people like you and I can go and look at their profile and see where they're from yeah. and get more yeah. information about them. People don't really think, I swear, before they comment sometimes. <laughs> I just read them and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But with your corporate partnerships internship and then your ticket services rep to internship, you've now got a full time with the 76ers doing social media. How did, did your advertising background really help? Did you know that that's where you wanted to be in social media? How did you come to decide that this is what I want to do? So I have always been a social media girl. I was the girl making YouTube videos in sixth nice. grade. And then in high school, I had a vlog channel. Um, I've always been on social media right. and I just always was so passionate for it. Um, and then when TikTok and Musical.ly came around, I was on that. And then obviously on TikTok now, I've I've connected with so many women who are yeah. interested in getting in sports or just like my content, stuff like that. And it's been truly unbelievable, yeah. the response and the amount of people who reach out to do cool opportunities like this. Just Absolutely. like me is like crazy because yeah. I'm just like some normal person. And like, I don't know, it's just a crazy feeling. Yeah. It, it really is. And then I created a group me that has about I think four or five hundred women in it who are all interested in sports work in sports um yes. etc stuff like that so that's been just a great community that has come from social media and I've made some really close friends from it so um that's also been a perk of it and then as far as like the advertising side my major I loved my major at Temple okay. it was I felt like absolutely perfect because even if I decide maybe not to work in sports one day, which I don't see that happening, but if I did, I still have such a strong background in so many different aspects. Like my coursework included marketing, social media, SEO, um, advertising, like literally just, it had the perfect array of background. And then we were able to pick like a concentration. So mine was account management. Um, okay which again, people may not directly see the tie there, but um, I, I don't know. I just really liked the major. I thought the classes were super fun. I took a lot of creative classes, which help me now in my position because a lot of my job is brainstorming and being creative, which I consider myself to be a creative individual. So uh, taking those classes, kind of working in groups, working by myself, um, I think that really did help me for creating content now for a professional sports team for one. And then even my own social media, as I said, I try to use that as a platform for myself. So I think it definitely helped me in all aspects. Now, before we head to TikTok, I always love to ask um, people like yourself that work in sports, what's a, what's a typical game day look like for you? What is a uh, home game for the 76ers? What does it look like for Allie? All right, so prime game day. I'll go off last night's game. Uh, I'll just tell you exactly what my night looked like. Yeah. Um, so we had a game last night against the Kings, um, and I got there at around 3.45-ish because we were doing, um, for arrivals, uh, today's NBA jersey day. And 
um, we were asking the players like, oh, uh, we gave them four different jerseys and we were asking them for TikTok and reels and stuff like yep. what jersey, what iconic Sixers jersey is your favorite? Yep. So I'm sure you've seen a lot of those videos where we ask them questions from yep. all different sports teams. Um, so I do those. I take the arrival videos. Super fun. I love um, asking the guys questions. The fans yep. really love it. They're excited to see a little bit about the guys and how they react and stuff yeah. so I did that for arrivals yesterday which takes a few hours because the guys all come at different times so um did the arrival shoot and um asking them the question and then from there I normally go see what other pre-game content needs to go out and if my boss I work for two other women the whole social team okay. is in for the Sixers which I absolutely love okay. I have the two best bosses in the world um they're amazing and they've been great mentors for me as well yeah. um, so I kind of go check in with them and see like if anything else needs to be posted or whatnot um but most of the time we have it now to like a pretty good schedule so I always try to eat quick before the game starts after arrivals and then once the game starts we um kind of just divide and conquer uh the three of us so we'll we all sit on like media row and then We'll post uh, before the game starts. We have to do starting lineup. We have to do bell ringer, um, which is something that the 76ers do for those who don't know. Um, before every game, we have someone come ring the bell. Yeah. Um, normally, it's like some cool people. We'll have like Eagles players sometimes, different athletes, different. We've had actors and actresses. So it's a, it's a really cool thing. The fans really like it as well. So we'll put that on social. Um, and then once the game starts, normally... Um, like I said, kind of just divide and conquer, whatever. I normally post all the score graphics. That's kind of like my thing. I keep up with that. Um, I do a lot of Facebook work during the games as well. Just posting some highlights from the games that are yeah. good plays or whatnot. Um, as well, help on Instagram, posting reels if we get like producer clips. Yeah. Um, so we're in contact with them throughout the whole game. If they get like a really good dunk or a good play. Um, we're asking them for that so we can put it on reels. Sometimes I even put it on TikTok. Um, I try to do TikTok stories a lot as well. Okay. Uh, I, I mostly run their TikTok. So like I'm kind of, that's like my platform. I kind of like take charge yeah. of it. I like to do all the content on there. Um, and then, yeah, during the game, I'm really just helping my bosses wherever they need. Like I said, um, just if we're winning, we're trying to put out as much content as we can. Absolutely. And um, if, we're, if it's not so um good of a game for us we try to like push back just because philly fans are very passionate yes um so that's something we take into account as well and then as far as post game if we lose we don't post anything just for some reasons yeah. um after the final score we'll post final score but that's it and then if we win we have a lot of sponsored content that needs to go out so um uh, for after games, if we win, I normally create like the game highlight reel and which is sponsored by crypto. So like, I always put that out and I schedule it for the next day. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, we all just kind of, again, divide and conquer any kind of content that needs to go out or be scheduled for the next day. And that's pretty much a typical game day. It's a lot. It's nice. chaotic. Sometimes we'll do some press conference coverage, um, for coach or players, whatever it may be. Is there a sort? Is there like a source of adrenaline that is just going the entire game that you're just feeding off of? It's like especially a good game. Like yeah, we played the Bucks a couple might have been a month ago at this point. It was like a very intense game, and like the yeah. crowd is just like intense. And like this Friday we play the Warriors, so I'm sure that's gonna be oh, like yeah. chaotic and just the energy in the arena. So like, while we're just trying to get out as much as we can, like we can't even hear each other sometimes. I'm, like we're right next to each other, but like, I'm not able to hear them. So yeah. it's definitely an adrenaline rush. That's the, I think that's the best thing about sports sometimes though. It, even it as a fan, it is like an adrenaline rush. Oh, absolutely. Watching. And the environment, especially, like I said, Philly sports, we have, we are blessed with a really passionate fan base absolutely. and the environment to watch these games live at. So it's been crazy. It's been fun. Um, yeah. Hopping to your TikTok, you've you just talked about it a little bit. It's such an incredible platform, and I told you before we started that's that's how I really came to know you, um, because I I'm a, I'm a huge follower of your content, just following along. 
like many other women that are wanting to be in sports or who are in sports, you hit, you talked about it a little bit, but what has the overall reception been like for you? What is, what is it? How did it start? What had it been like? So I feel like when I was kind of figuring everything out for myself, like I, I didn't have much, I don't know. I don't want to say like help or guidance, but like, I really didn't. So I turned to like social media, yeah, um, which is where I was introduced to a lot of more famous women in sports. And I was like, wow, like that's, I want to be that one day. Like I would love to be in their position while yeah. having an amazing career on their own, like being um, a platform for other women to kind of follow and ask questions and stuff like that. So um, I just kind of started, like I said, I've always been passionate, always been posting on social media anyway. So I was like, why not? Like my story, I, I think it is kind of cool. Like I've worked for a lot of teams that a lot of people think is cool. So I was like, why not make content about that? So I just kind of started posting content about my jobs. I started with the Phillies. Um, That's when I kind of started posting content more seriously. Okay. Um, So I started posting and the content just started doing better than any other of my normal dumb trendy TikToks I was posting. So I was like, oh, and this is like fun. Like people are asking me questions. People want to know more about what I do. People want to know how I got to where I am. Um, So when I was at the Flyers, I started doing a lot of like day in my lives uh, just for like the viewers to see. And they again did pretty well. Um, And then from there, I kind of built up a little bit of a following that semester, my last semester of college. Um, So I started that group me just because I was getting so many different questions and people um wanted to and uh, like uh just even talk on the phone with me and like connect on LinkedIn so I was like why not make a group me because like I don't know everything myself obviously I I, I don't know every sport I don't know different places in America outside of America so uh, that's when I made the group me and um it really took off I think within the first week I had over I had hundreds of women in it already and it was a really really surreal feeling um And then from there, a lot of like uh, smaller group meets were created just for like women in hockey, women in baseball, whatever. Um, And just from that has been super cool. Um, And like I said, I'm in them and I feel like I know these girls very well now, a lot of them. I made some really close friends my age. We have like a text group chat. We talk in every single day, like, and I've never even met these girls in person, but like I feel like I've known them my whole life. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's a great way to connect. I use the platform and I'm so glad I did um, just for meeting and connecting and asking questions and helping other people. I've had, I don't even know how many people reach out to me on Instagram and LinkedIn just to ask to interview me for class or even just to ask questions about how, what I should do at this age. What, what did you do here and whatnot? So um, plaf- the, the TikTok has really just, um, I think changed the, pathway for a lot of women in sports and there's a whole community on that app that I didn't even know existed so it's been truly I I think it has helped shape me into the person I am today inside and outside of my career much like how you turn to social media to learn more you've become that person for others as they've turned to social media to learn more which has to be kind of a full circle kind of situation for you but what a what a phenomenal experience just to be part of and be a source for people to know that you're going to be there to answer questions for them it's been like i said i i get a lot way more than i ever could have expected but i i try to get back and answer or at least i've done countless calls zoom calls and interviews yeah. for classes and stuff like that um so it's been it's been crazy like i i yeah. don't even I used to be doing, I used to do the same thing. I used to reach out to people. And I also remember a time where like, no one was answering me. A lot of people didn't answer me. And I was like lost at that point. And I really needed some help or just advice. So, um, I try to not be that person who doesn't answer and doesn't help. Um, not a gatekeeper. I, I try to give all my advice. I give everything that I know and I did. And I just kind yeah. of, help them because I'm like what is me like why would I not want to help other people 
I know so many people who gatekeep too, and I'm like, it's it's not like you're gonna stop this one person from going and becoming another version of you in the sports world, but at least be helpful in a women helping women kind of way. Like be an example so someone can go do that for somebody else as well. And I've even met a few different like guys who have been very supportive and asked to interview me as well, which is a great feeling because there's also been a lot of guys who aren't um, just in my comment sections. It's, it's crazy sometimes. And um, I've made one really good friend from TikTok as well, who creates content on there. And he's, he's amazing. He just interviewed me for like a paper for his class. That's so, awesome. Like, um, it's really been great on both ends. Um, but yeah. yeah, TikTok's, I always encourage people to use it for their own um, benefit because you yeah. really, it, it is, it's an amazing platform. I think that has evolved over the last two years, ever since everybody kind of joined it in 2020 when COVID came about. But what uh, what a crazy platform it has become of um, people like yourself, but people in their own area of expertise that it's really just blossomed and grown so much. Uh, and my speaking from personally, I can't stay off of it for very long. <laughs> it's so addicting. <laughs> and even when I'm off my own, I'm on it for work. So it's like I live on TikTok. <laughs> yes. Now, with you doing your work with the 76ers and then growing and then having this TikTok platform that is continuing to grow, is there an idea in your head like, I want to do something more on, on my kind of own of helping these people? through TikTok, is there is there any sort of growth opportunities you have in mind through your TikTok? Yeah, I mean, I, um, like I said, just during the season, life is pretty chaotic right now. So yeah. I would love to dedicate more time to my own platform than I'm kind of able to right now. Okay. Um, but I, I really do try to just use it um, and just interact with, the, with people who reach out. Um, right. But as far as like next steps, I would love to like, I've even thought about like doing my own kind of podcast or just yeah. like something where, um, cause I get asked like the same questions a lot of the time. And like, I'm trying to not like, I can't just put out the same video for every comment I get. So I've tried, um, just using like the playlist feature on TikTok, yeah. but I would love to like, just kind of see what opportunities come. I mean, I, I, you can see how many influencers on TikTok where their lives have been completely changed. Absolutely. Um, and I also am so passionate about social media myself. I've also been looking into a lot of like the NIL agent stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's something that like I th- would think would be really cool just to help um, athletes in their own way to kind of help help them with their social media and marketing, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I just love, I have always been passionate for social. So working in it now has been nothing short of amazing and exactly what I've been looking for. I vote for the podcast because I think <laughs> it'd be such a cool concept. I vote for it. Uh, yeah. Even if it's just something you do off season, just to really like short episodes, but there's so many you could do like a phone call, somebody calling in to ask a question kind of concept, whatever it may yeah. be. That would be cool too. That or like, um, I was thinking too of just like highlighting other women in sports because I, like I said, I don't do it all. There are plenty of jobs, absolutely, uh, not in social like that. I can't answer questions for. Yeah. So like, I just feel like introducing and having that community where you could go and really look for what you're interested in. Yeah. Um, would be a great outlet to have or if you don't really know what you want to do but you know you want to be in that realm of sports um yep. kind of listening learning yep um would be really helpful i think what's so funny too is we get a really big taste of the women who are the broadcasters and who you see on tv and things like that but we don't get to hear as much from people like you who are really behind the scenes and who are making the damn show run throughout every single game. And I think along with the women you see on TV, the women that are behind the screens as well and behind the scenes are just as talented or are incredible to get their perspective on. Um, so I, th- I love getting to hear just every aspect of yeah. sports world. 
that was like my one thing in college. I felt like the only type of sports job I knew for women was truly just broadcasting. And that was such yeah. a competitive field. Absolutely. Um, and that's just not what I wanted to do. Yeah. I didn't want to be on camera, which yeah. sounds weird, but I didn't want to be on camera and, and yeah. reading a script. I stutter. Like I, I don't talk straight. Like I, I was not meant to do that. Right. Um, but like, there's so many jobs that like, even from the Sixers, I will say they have so many women who work there. It truly is a great organization. And I love that. Like they have trainers that are women. They have producers yeah. that are shooting on the court. Those nice yeah. videos, women doing that. Like there are women in every aspect, ticket sales, like everywhere, which you never used to see that anywhere. Yeah. So um, I feel like a lot of just girls in general who might be interested may think that broadcasting is kind of like that only option, yeah. um, but it's really not. So that's how you just said it was perfect. Like I would love to open that conversation and and kind of yeah. just show that there's so many more different, so much more you can do. Yes, um, yes. truly sports besides broadcasting. I volunteer to be your producer if you do this. I will. <laughs> I want to be a part of it. Yeah, it would be fun. <laughs> Now you got me thinking. My Ooh. last question for you, Allie, is just what inspires you? Oof, that's such a good question. Um, what inspires me? So I, for one, like I said, when I kind of started looking into sports and I saw all these women who like yeah. were doing careers for teams and then had their own career yeah. um, on social media for themselves, that was like immediately what like, I was drawn to and I was like I want to do that like I want to have more than just a nine to five job like that's just not me I I love working and I yep. love um being passionate about what I do and I told it was funny when I graduated this past May actually I didn't have a job lined up and I remember I felt so um kind of like discouraged and I felt so I was like, I tried so hard. I did everything right. I think yeah. that like I was told to do like, like, why do I not have a job? So many of my friends had jobs lined up and I was just like, I don't know why, like, what did I do wrong? Yep. Um, and it took me, I think two months, which is not a long time at all. Like that was the one thing that like, I wish I could go back now and be like, literally just stop, like relax. <laughs> like it's not it, right. there's no timeline. There really isn't. And so during that time, I remember my parents were like, well, you don't have to start out in sports maybe. And I was like, no, no. I was like, I'm just not going to take a job where I'm not passionate about what I'm doing. And so I feel like um, just seeing those women do that. And like, I really wanted to be like them. Like, for example, like Katie Feeney. I don't know if you know her. Like, I love her content. And I think she's amazing, especially for girls in college still to look up to. Like, yeah. She a great person to follow and kind of maybe try to reach out. I know she has a huge platform. So like, I don't know how much she's able to do for that, but she's just, her content's great for her own. And then she works with so many different sports teams. She's done so much. So just someone like her and she's younger than me. And like, I even look up to her still, like, I think she's incredible. Um, so just as far as like inspiration, like even I'm constantly like even if I'm not working, like I'm working, I am always, if I'm sitting on TikTok, like people see that as like not working, but like I'm working, like I'm looking at what's trending right now. Yeah. Like what, what sounds like, what, what type of content can I make, whether it be for me or for the Sixers? Like I am just constantly like, I feel like my mind never stops. So like, I just feel like I have, I don't know, just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, that's such a hard question. Like when people ask me like what inspires me, I don't know. I just feel like I have this drive to be like, like I'm not satisfied. Like, even yeah. though I've done so much, like I'm never content. Like I'm always looking for like what's next yeah. and like where I can go next. Yeah. So I feel like that kind of pushes me to be better than I am the day before. I don't know. I, you and I have the same mind. It's hard for me even to go to sleep at night. Cause I'm like, I'm like thinking of these million different things that I could do. There's not enough hours in the day. <laughs> like my ADHD makes that even harder. Cause I'm like, okay, you need to put the phone down, like go to yes. bed. I actually like started a routine where I literally make myself watch YouTube videos to go to sleep okay. because I will not sit on my phone. Like I have to get off of it. Okay. Um, so it's a good way to kind of unplug yeah. um, for the like 30 minutes that I do it a day. Yeah. Where I'm not on a phone or some sort of technology. Yeah. So um, 
but yeah, it helps. I always encourage that too. Like you can't always be on, like you do have to turn off and rest and, um, cause if not, you're going to run out, like you're going to burn out. And that's something that the Sixers have also been really like, um, great with is like encouraging downtime and like resetting and all that. So that's all a part of the like work process is taking time off and stuff like that. Ali, I can't thank you enough for coming on and speaking with me today. I can't wait to continue to follow along on your TikTok and see what you do next. Um, I think you've created such a beautiful platform and I love that you are inspiring other women who want to be in sports and who are in sports already. But um, it's I just thank you for doing that because I think it's it's the place that needs more women representation in right now. That means so much to me, seriously. It's like crazy when people say that to me. It makes me like, I don't even know what to say, but it really means a lot. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you guys do not follow Allie, all of her socials will be linked down below. Please go check her out. Please follow her. And uh, as always, I will see you guys back here next time. Bye, y'all.